if you have an air conditioner at home, you know the struggle. You have to remember to get up to bump the temperature up or down, depending on how comfortable you are, or bump it down at night and remember to bump it back up in the morning and make sure that you're setting the temperature just right so that you're not overworking your air conditioning system. It's a hassle. Inner Climate Control Automation. I'm gonna show you how I control my climate with Home Assistant. I adjust for outside temperature, whether it's daytime or nighttime, and whether anybody's at home. Hi, I'm Logan, and this is Home Automation Lab. Okay, maybe I was a little too infomercially in my intro, but it's true. Having to remember to adjust your thermostat whenever you leave or at night, it can be a pain. But it doesn't have to be. And that's what I'm going to show you today. I use NWS forecasts, built-in people tracking, and the sun with my climate control automations inside of Home Assistant. It automatically adjusts, you don't have to do anything, and you have the ability to override when you want to. As always, the episode notes will have the YAML, notes and diagrams from this episode. A link will be in the description and on homeautomationlab.tv. So when I started planning this automation, I already had climate control in my house, but it was a bit piecemeal and it was a little bit hectic. There were two different scripts, one for daytime, one for nighttime, and those ran based on the current time. Um, and it, it didn't, it took into account the current temperature, but not the outside temperature. And it did a pretty okay job, but it required a good bit of adjusting. When I built this one, I wanted to make sure that it was going to just operate without having to be touched. It's a, I want it to be set it and forget it. Uh, so I wanted to make something more robust and that could handle more situations on its own. This automation uses outside temperature to create set temperature set points for cool and heat, then adjust for nighttime, and then adjust for away. And then it'll send the temperatures to your thermostat. And just a quick note, uh, this video is going to be a little bit different. Uh, the last video I uh, did step-by-step -step basically of how to do the automation and I feel like it was a little bit boring and a little bit long. So this time I'm just kind of showing you and I'm just gonna be narrating it for us. So let me know if you like this, leave a comment below, leave a like, etc., etc. So before you add the automation that I'm going to be showing you today. There's a few sensors that I've posted on homeautomationlab.tv as snippets that you'll need to add to your system that we'll be using in that in our automation. Uh, one is a daytime binary sensor that determines the current day-night cycle. So it's if if it's daylight, it's true. Uh, so it's based on the rising and setting times of the sun uh, that's built in for your home zone. And you can also adjust it to be based on twilight or even just a static time window if you wanted, you know, daytime to be 7 o'clock p.m. till 6 o'clock a.m. I guess that would probably be kind of useful if you were like in Alaska where there are days where there's no sunrise or sunset or very short sunrise sunsets. Uh, there's also um, the day's highs and low temperatures. Um we get that from the forecast for your area using the National Weather Service integration that's already included in Home Assistant. It updates uh, once per day at 6 a.m. local time. And so we have that, uh, those two sensors update at the same time. It gives you uh, the day's high, the day's low, the daytime precipitation chances, and the nighttime precip chances. And then using those sensors, there's another sensor that gives us outside temperature that's based on the current time of day. So if it's daytime, it'll grab that, that high temperature. If it's nighttime, it'll grab the low temperature. And then finally, there's a set of uh, away mode sensors and automations. 
Uh, so I'm using home assistance people tracking to determine if someone's at home and for knowing how long the home has been empty. Uh, so from there, we are kind of like saying, okay, if it's, if there's if it's been empty for 30 minutes, it's just going to be away. They're just on, you know, going to the store. They're just out for work, whatever. But if it's been 12 hours or more, like a vacation, it's called an extended away. And you can adjust how many hours it is very, very easily. As with any good automation, I've included a way to override. You can permanently override or temporarily override it for a set number of minutes. So you'll need to create an override Boolean helper with, that indicates whether or not the override is on or off. And that's going to be the only helper that we're going to be using inside of the automation itself. There's also the override mode selector that lets you set whether it's temporary or permanent. And then for temporary overrides, there's two other sensors, and two automations. A number sensor for setting how many minutes to override, and a date-time sensor for taking that number of minutes and putting it into a timestamp so that we know when to turn off the override. One of the automations sets that date-time stamp based on those minutes, and another automation just turns off override once we reach that date-time. Okay, so on to the main automation. This one is going to be fairly easy to implement because I'm going to include the entire thing as a YAML and you can just copy and paste it in and then edit you know, those, the variables that you need to edit and let the rest be handled by what I've already put in. So the automation itself triggers every three minutes or when the override is turned off. Since we don't actually update the thermostat uh, unless the actual like things that we're sending to the thermostat have been changed. It's okay. We're not going to run into any type of rate limiting. So we should be good there. And it's even probably okay to bump this down to once per minute if you want. Configuration of the automation happens in that first set of variables. You can enter your thermostat's entity ID, away mode differential, nighttime differential, default temperatures, and climate set points. The nighttime values allow you to make adjustments to the heating and cooling when it's nighttime. Instead of having set points for, you know, based on the temperature, uh, what I do at night, I like to sleep really cold. So I would bump down the heat and, I mean, bump up, the, wait, yeah, bump down the heat and then also bump down the 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 cool settings because I want it to be an ice box, a literal ice box. The more ice crystals that form on my face at night, the better. Uh, but you can set it to zero if you don't want to adjust nighttime temperatures. There's also minimum and maximum temperatures that are also optional. And it makes sure that your nighttime is going to stay within a, a given range. And the away mode differentials do similar to the nighttime, but it's just based on uh, away and extended away modes. And then the default set points are used when the outside temperature sensor that, that we have that we talked about earlier, it isn't working. So if, if I'm not able to get the forecast, I set the temperature and the precipitation to negative 200. And that's how, because the coldest temperature on Earth is like negative 128. So I figured negative 200 was pretty safe. Um, so that gives us something that's a, that's a base uh, range that's comfortable in case that's broke for whatever reason. In the climate set points configuration, you set the outside value to what you want the outside temperature to be greater than. So these are going to be sorted by the outside temperature itself, so it doesn't matter what order you put them in. Neither cool nor heat values are required, but you need to have at least one of them. Um, otherwise, it, you know, kind of breaks. Uh, and leaving one, leaving one out is going to make the mode heat or cool only uh, instead of heat and cool. You'll notice that in my configuration, the final temperature is negative 100 degrees. In Alabama, we're never going to reach that. 
unless there is an ice age. And I'm probably not going to be alive for an ice age. So that's kind of acting as my default temperature whenever it's below 30 degrees outside. That's going to be kind of like what everything gets set to. The rest of the automation should be untouched unless you know what you're doing and you're making a specific change. So I'm going to talk about the technical aspects and the technical flow of all of this. So if you want to, you can skip to this time. So the set dynamic variable step is the meat of the automation, and the bulk of it is calculating the cool and heat temperature set points. I first calculate the set points based on the outside temperature, then adjust, make the nighttime adjustments, and then the away adjustments. And finally, a sanity check to make sure that the set point is, isn't above or below the thermostat's minimum and maximum. And you'll notice that it's all in template form instead of you know using the building blocks that home assistant provides and that's because the global variables aren't really global whenever you change them inside of like a condition so if you change a variable in a condition it just stays in that condition and it doesn't kind of flow out it turned out a little bit better to use templates because you it looks so much more clean like it's so much nicer, but you do have some limitations and you have, I had to copy over like the logic from, you know, cool and to heat instead of trying to do logic together. But that's, I digress. Like it works. <laughs> After that, we check to see uh, if the mode and the set points have changed from what the thermostat is uh, currently reporting. And if there aren't any changes, the automation is stopped and we don't update the thermostat. And, and that's going to prevent any sort of rate limiting that you may have with a thermostat, especially ones like mine that are controlled via the internet through Google Nest. And then finally, we update the thermostat itself. I included three different conditional actions here. Uh, one, if the thermostat always requires a high and low temperature, uh, we're just replacing the missing temperature with the thermostat's minimum or maximum. And it seems like some thermostats require both. I'm not sure in what situations they require, you know, both. Like, like why? Like, if, is it a heat pump or is it a, you know, whatever? But um, that does seem to be a thing that happens. One, if it's heat or cool only mode, since you have to use a different variable in the action. And then finally, one for heat and cool. Okay, nerdy bits are over, and now we can bring everything together on your dashboard. I added a tile for toggling the climate override, a conditional tile based on whether climate override is on, for selecting the override mode, and then another conditional, which is a group of tiles for the temporary override. And voila, you have automated climate control that's sophisticated and adjusts to your needs. I've been testing this automation in my house for the last few weeks, and it's been working really well for me. I'm really pleased, and I hope you will be too. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm posting videos fairly regularly about making my house an automated paradise. You can also check out the new website, homeautomationlab.tv. I post snippets for Home Assistant episode notes and I'm working on a guide for doing basic tasks that I don't usually cover in details in my videos. So I hope to see you there and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Uh, excuse me. Uh, you, am I making eye contact properly? I don't know. You know what? Hold on. We're gonna, we're gonna, uh, excuse me. Sorry.